back on Marching to Madness this afternoon, and we're back out in the West Coast Conference with our friend Stan Johnson from Loyola Marymouth. Coach Johnson took the Lions to a 13-9 and record last season, 7-5 and in the WCC in that COVID-abbreviated season. Coach, that was good for third in uh, the conference. Not a bad, uh, not a bad opening act, as we say on Broadway. Yeah, no, we, you know, so many people had to endure so much last year uh, in terms of teams and COVID and different protocols and games missed and, you know, just the inconsistency of the season and uh, the season being pushed back. And, you know, for our team, we had a lot of excuses and a lot of reasons not to push through. Uh, it's hard enough when you hire a new coach and you got to learn everything differently. And then you add a, a pandemic that we still really haven't gotten through on top of that. I was really proud of um, what we were able to accomplish in some tough circumstances and uh, happy with where we're at and where we finish, but, you know, we're not satisfied and um, you know, we're hoping to, to add to, to what we did last year. And, you know, I've been telling our guys, we got to multiply and uh, we're looking forward to that. Yeah. You know, looking at that scene and the scene in college basketball, you know, we went from uh, the, the pandemic back a year over a year ago, shutting things down to the continued racial issues and racial unrest throughout the country. Then the transfer portal, now the NIL, just talk about the perseverance of the game. And then maybe uh, your Lions, as, as, that was a nice job last year. Yeah, you know, I, I think, um, you know, there's been a lot coming at us, you know, in, in the world, uh, in college basketball and, you know, for our program. Um, but, you know, things are always evolving. And uh, what we're seeing in college basketball, the game's evolving. And, you mm -hmm. uh, this is not the first time they've implemented new things and it's not going to be the last. And, you know, I said it last year, the people who can adapt, uh, the people who can change course and, and not lose enthusiasm. And, you know, those are the coaches, the players, the programs that are, are going to do well. Um, and that's what we're seeing, you know, with the name image likeness, there's a new level of adaptation and understanding that has to take place. And that's part of it. It's not going to change. It's not going anywhere. And the people who can adapt best and uh, do it with the same amount of passion, uh, or, you know, those, those, those people in those places are going to have real success. success and and we, we sure hope we're, we're one of those. Talk about great news for your program there on the hardwood. Eli Scott announcing he'll come back for his fifth season. Average 18.8 points, eight point two rebounds per game talk about his presence what what does this mean for you guys on and off the court well you know off the court you know we had a, the, the chance to keep a, a, a great person in our program mm -hmm. and he's a great kid um you know so that's that's a win and on the floor um we we had a chance to, to add somebody who had a, an incredible year last year and yeah. I think um, it, it really has been downplayed to some degree, you know, in, in league, I, I think he led the league in scoring and rebounding uh, over 20 points and maybe close to 10 rebounds. So he's a guy that can do a lot. Um, you know, he kind of stirs uh, everything us up for us. Um, and he, he kind of makes it go. You know, the, the thing about Eli that I love is he's continuing to improve. And he made a big decision to come back uh, because he knew there were some things in his game that needed to improve. And most importantly, um, he felt like there was some unfinished business. And, I'm, you know, I'm proud of the, the decision he made to be back. Yeah, he was first team all uh, West Coast Conference. Uh, when you talk about unfinished business, those guys, you know, you're going to have a pretty veteran group. It seems like they might, uh, you know, be able to put Gonzaga already in the crosshairs, you know, because belief is what is the is to me the thing that kickstarts everything in any sport. Yeah, you know, for us, we just, you know, we we talk about it all the time, you know, in our program. Uh, every game's a big game because it's the next game, mm -hmm. and you know, we don't get 
really caught up on who's doing what. We're more concerned about us and and we have a chance to take a great step here. It's not going to happen because we believe that. It's going to happen because we continue to have the right kind of culture, uh, mm -hmm. the right kind of belief, um, and we continue to be a, a selfless, relentless, connected basketball team. That's we have to do those things. And if we can do that, you know, great things will happen. The worst thing that can happen for us is to to feel good about last year. Last year's gone, and it was a great step. But now we have to take the next one. And the next one's always harder because now there's expectation. And uh, people expect us to be good. More importantly, we expect ourselves to be good. So uh, we're, we're excited about the possibilities. Damian Douglas will be back beside a Eli Scott 13.5 points, 7.3 rebounds, great around the rim. What's the next step for Damian here, uh, you know, in his process of uh, developing into a whole player? Well, the, the biggest thing for him is to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he only played in four conference games last year and, and, and he was out. I mean, who knows what we could have done with Damian uh, in our lineup, you know, so uh, we need him healthy and we're, we, you know, everything is pointing in the right direction there. Uh, but, you know, Damian's growth now is can we, can he take care of the ball? And can he make the guys around him better? You know, he's a guy that's going to be able to score. He can really rebound. He's got to take care of the ball. He's got to make people around him better. And he's got to take pride in every night guarding the other team's best player. And if we can get that kind of effort from him and that kind of contribution to go along with the growth in the scoring and rebounding, uh, well, things are going to be good for us, but things will be really, really good for him personally. You got a really nice player there as well, the Australian Kelly Lopepe. I hope I got that right. Toughness defines him. He has a love for playing also on the defensive end of the floor. Yeah, he's a tough kid. Kelly's a winner. He's a winning person. He's a winning player. Uh, there's so many things that he does and never shows up on a stat sheet. Uh, he can care less if he has one point or 20. And he, he makes winning plays. And he can change the game with his physicality and his motor. Um, you just can't put a price tag on it. And I think uh, he's going to continue to do all that. But, you know, his game continues to evolve and, and grow. So uh, I think we'll see more of a complete player going into his third year. Joe Quintana and Jalen Anderson there on the perimeter for you. Three-point shooters. Quintana made 39. He shot 43% from the field. Now, that three-point game in general, you're looking to take the next step with it as well. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, we, we really are. And Joe is, is one of the best shooters in the country. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the best shooters in our league. Um, and I, I think with the addition of some of the new guys and, and having the old guys back, you know, there should be more opportunities for him to, to, to get loose. And I think we have more guys now with playmaking ability and, and with, you know, especially off the dribble where they can um, create numbers. And, and now he's in drive and kick situations where he's catching and shooting, which that's when he's at his very best. So I think, you know, I, his numbers from a shooting percentage will, will continue to go up. Coach, I, you know, in studying your basketball team, uh, I'm, I'm under the uh, assumption that the biggest thing for you to take an, another step would be cleaner ball handling, right? It was a it was turnover factors might have hurt you in a lot of the close games that you lost. Yeah, I mean, we we just we we led the league in turnovers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I tell our team all the time. You know, one 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 possession can determine a game, and yeah. and, and one game can determine a season, and imagine if we can get a few of those back shoot maybe we're sitting here at 16 or 17 or 18 and, and maybe we were we would have been a tournament team sure I don't know if you could just fix that but you know bringing key guys in like cam shelton who mm -hmm. comes to us from uh, northern arizona a guy who averaged 20 and points a game and uh you know really did a great job to take care of the ball he's a high level player uh he's going to help us i think another year of jalen understanding what college basketball is about. Um, he's going to be better. You know, again, Joe going through a whole season, being healthy will be better. Um, bringing in Quan Marble from Wyoming. 
yeah. another guy that can handle it. You know, so I, I think we've got more guys now that that can really handle the ball. And, you know, we've got a freshman by the name of David Elliott and Lamaj Lewis, two freshmen that are big, strong ball handlers. So our, our ball handling and playmaking ability uh, is a lot better than what it was a year ago. The kids you just mentioned, I was going to ask about the newcomers. What was the biggest thing, maybe other than ball handling, that they addressed uh, as a group in your well, recruiting efforts? The big kid, Alex, um, from from Cal State Northridge, was a freshman there last year, averaged 10 and 8. I think he shot 40% for three. Mm -hmm. You know, really space it, and he can shoot. And he, you know, he gives us another weapon on the perimeter uh, and another threat, uh, which – Again, we didn't have and a guy you can throw the ball to and a guy that can really rebound. So, um, you know, the shooting is is I, I thought we we addressed that um, with with what we picked up, uh, whether it was through our freshmen or our, our transfers and guys that can take the load off Eli and some of these guys, you know, handling the ball and making every play. So uh, I think I think um, at least I'm praying our our turnovers go down and our shooting goes up and our rebounding stays the same, if not better. Uh, and if we can do that, you know, we'll be in some games. On the turnover piece, how do you uh, kind of dissect that in general? Is that something where it's more mental than it is maybe a, a fundamental approach to players? Yeah. You know, I, I went through all our, I don't know how many hundreds of turnovers this year and, and categorized them. You know, 60% of those turnovers come from simple, you know, catching and, and passing, mm -hmm. you know, which goes in the fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, and you can add to that. I mean, there's a component where a lot of that is just, you know, focus, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, those are, and those things are correctable. And, uh, you know, last year when I got here, we really didn't have a summer, you know, because of the pandemic. And, you know, we've had a good eight weeks um, in the summer and uh, there was a huge emphasis on those on those things. And that that's where we got to improve and get better. When those kids came together in the summer, uh, you know, and, and it seemed like a sense of normalcy. What emotions did you see, maybe not only from them, but your coaching staff? Well, I think, you know, being able to just compete and, and be together, you know, our whole team is, is fully vaccinated, but, you know, being able to take the mask down, and, you know, sh show, show our faces and, and see each other. And that felt as normal as anything, yeah. you know? So that was um, like an energy boost. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, Obviously, we got to continue to protect each other and do our part. But, um, you know, that was the biggest part of being together was being able to, to compete and play basketball like how you're supposed to do it. Your first trip through the WCC, what were some of your takeaways about the conference? I mean, we know I think it's getting better every year, but just some things maybe you saw that maybe the average fan or the average writer would not. Well, I I mean, I think it it, it more or less – confirmed what I believe coming in that our league is really, really good. Yeah. And in a lot of regards, it's very underrated. You know, you've got some elite coaches, you have some really good players and you have some great places, some great venues. And this is a really good league. I yeah. mean, excellent league. And I'll put it up with most leagues in the country uh, from top to bottom, you know, uh, from how it's coached to the type of players that are, that are in the league. And, um, you know, so, it's the, the the margin in this league though is very small in terms of winning and losing and sure. most teams are you know right there with each other and again that's why it goes back to the little things the turnovers and one possession can you know it's the difference between third second place and six seven eight at times mm -hmm. Last thing, Coach, uh, name, image, and likeness. You know, I, I'm really glad the kids are getting a piece of the pie here. I think it's long overdue. It's been long overdue by many, many years. I'm just curious how this might be a different factor, like at a Loyola Marymount where, you know, basketball is, I guess, the sport because there is no football. Do you think the dynamic's different? 
Well, I, I definitely think there are some advantages and they can certainly help. Um, who I'm not right now on the subject is an expert. Right. You know, and um, what we're doing is kind of analyzing it and seeing uh, what's what. Uh, but, you know, I, I do believe in our place, we're going to have opportunities and the kids will have some opportunities. Um, but, you know, I, I think part of it, when it first happened, I think everybody thought, yeah, you know, the money's going to be rolling in. And, you know, there's a lot of professional athletes that don't get endorsed. Sure. And I understand the money sometimes a little different, but um, our kids are going to have to find their way in their niche. Uh, uh, with this, uh, but I do think being in LA, I do think being at a basketball school, uh, those are two things that could be very helpful as we learn more and, and, and grow that part of, of college basketball for our program. Coach Stan Johnson at Loyola Marymount in the West Coast Conference, a team that's ascending up that ladder. Coach, it's always a pleasure to have you back on here. I uh, hope we can do it again, uh, maybe sometime here during the season. Awesome. Would love to. Appreciate you having yeah. me. Oh, yeah. It's always a pleasure. Good luck to you. Thanks, my brother. Thank you, brother.